Great things were done by a series of small things brought together by Vincent Van Gogh. Good day, my name is Aubrey Dunn-Reed and today we will be tackling about lean accounting and productivity measurement. As what I have quoted a while ago, it has a connection with a topic that we will be discussing and the first is all about lean manufacturing. So lean manufacturing is an operating approach designed to eliminate waste and maximize customer value. It is characterized by delivering the right product in the right quantity with the right quality or zero defect at the exact time that the customer needs it at the lowest possible cost. Did you know that lean manufacturing strategy roots lie in Japanese manufacturing with a Toyota production system? Lean's principle pioneered by Toyota also includes just-in-time manufacturing, where inventory is kept as low as needed, automation supervised by human workers to maintain quality control, and the minimization of downtime and transportation has greatly contributed in this strategy. Many firms are modifying their business processes to focus on the consumer as well as the value chain activities that promotes a customer-oriented approach and eliminate waste. So, these businesses have used lean manufacturing and it is a production process based on ideology of maximizing productivity while simultaneously minimizing waste within a manufacturing operation. So, the lean principle sees waste is anything that doesn't add value that the customer are willing to pay for. Because the lean methodologies are always customer focused, which means that people are the most important thing to consider. And eliminating waste with lean starts by identifying what is valuable to the customers buying the product and putting all the focus on those items. There are three objectives of lean manufacturing, which are the elimination of waste, reduce cost and to be efficient. So the first one is the eliminating waste, where it will be the high priority among the objectives because it has a foundational task within a lean manufacturing strategy and also it has eight standardized defined forms of waste that manufacturers can examine that lead to a comprehensive view of where the organization is losing profits to the inefficiencies. So the first waste is defects. It is a poor quality or inconsistent products, poor machine repair, inaccuracies in inventory levels, and even lack of documentation can also qualify as defects. The second one is excess processing. So this occurs when processes move too slowly. Like for example, um, it, involves slow, um, it involves slow approval processes, excess reporting, duplicating data, and etc. So the third one is the overproduction. So too much product and not enough need immediately results in waste. If customer needs errant clear or forecasting data is inaccurate among a host of other issues, then overproduction can lead to waste in time, material, and labor alike. The fourth waste is waiting. So spending time waiting is called spending for a reason. There are plenty of reasons employees might have to wait around including unplanned downtime, idle equipment, poor process communication, and long setup times. Next is the inventory. So safety stock is one place many manufacturers get in trouble with this form of waste. Inaccurate forecasting, overproduction, or poor communication between manufacturing and purchasing can lead to inventory waste. Next is the transportation. If all the things that you need to get to have huge gaps between them, then there is a lot of waste compared to optimizing spaces so that logically relevant items are closer together. A transportation waste due to a poor factory layout can be a catalyst for other wastes such as a waiting. The seventh waste is motion. So if it gets moved when it really doesn't need to, that's a waste. So it can refer to data, raw materials, people, or anything really. So wasted motions comes from bending, squatting, or reaching just as it comes from silhouette, operation, and poor production plan. And lastly, non-utilized talent. So if employees are under-trained and under-stimulated, there is a waste. So employee talent could be underutilized due to poor management or communication as well as a failure to involve employees in design and development tasks. 
So the next objective is to reduce costs. As we all know, it will be the result of the elimination of waste and be beneficiary to the whole company. And lastly, to become efficient. Efficiency is when you do the same things faster or with less waste and being efficient creates more revenue to the company. That is why firms implementing a lean manufacturing system pursues a cost reduction or cost leadership strategy by redefining the activities performed within the organization. And because of that, there are many advantages using this strategy, which are having a better quality, increased productivity, reduced lead times, major reductions in inventories, reduced setup times, lower manufacturing costs, and increased production rates. This offers great financial benefits and supports companies in quickly scaling their operation. So lean strategies also boost agility and competitiveness. Let's move on to the lean thinking. It is a framework that aims to provide a new way to think about how to organize human activities to deliver more benefits to society and also to value those individuals who are eliminating waste. So there are five principles of it. The first one is to precisely specify the value of each particular product. Second is to identify the value stream. Third is a make value flow without interruption. Fourth is let the customer pull value from the producer. And fifth, pursue perfection. The aim of lean thinking is to create a lean culture, one that sustains growth by aligning customer satisfaction with employee satisfaction, and that offers innovative products or services profitably while minimizing unnecessary overcost to customers, suppliers, and the environment. Lean thinking supports the notion that we must devote as much focus to improvement efforts as we do the project work. In accordance with lean manufacturing, we also have lean accounting. So this is an accounting approach that organizes costs according to the value chain and collects both financial and non-financial information. So the objective is to provide financial statements that better reflect overall performance using both financial and non-financial information. While accounting cannot keep up with the changes in company operations, it should constantly follow. Many organizations' conventional cost management strategies have altered as a result of the multiple changes in structural and procedural activities that we have defined for a lean firm. So, everybody working seriously on the lean transformation of their company and eventually it bumps up against their accounting systems. So, traditional accounting systems, particularly those using standard costing, activity-based costing, or other full absorption methods are designed to support traditional management methods. And as a company moves to lean thinking, many of the fundamentals of its management systems change and traditional accounting, control, and measurement methods become unsuitable. The traditional cost management system may not work well in the lean environment. In fact, the traditional costing and operational control approaches may actually work against lean manufacturing. So, the standard costing variances and departmental budgetary variances will likely encourage overproduction and work against the demand pull system needed in lean manufacturing. Like for example, emphasis on labor efficiency by comparing actual hours used with hours allowed to for production encourages production to keep labor occupied and productive. Similarly, emphasis on departmental efficiency, like for example, machine utilization rates will cause non-bottleneck departments to overproduce and build working process inventory. Furthermore, we already know from our study of activity-based costing that in a multiple product plan, the use of plant-wide overhead rate can produce distorted product costs relative to focused manufacturing assignments or activity-based assignments and distorted product costs can signal failure for lean manufacturing even when significant improvements may be occurring to avoid obstacles and false signals. Changes in both product costing and operational control approaches are needed when moving to a value stream-based lean manufacturing system. Thus, some people object to making changes to the accounting processes because they ask why we would want to spend time making processes better when in fact we will be eliminating them in the future. 
So the answer to that is that with Lean, we are always interested in making many small improvements and we are not looking for the silver bullet that will solve all the problems. On the contrary, we are looking to engage the entire workforce in many smaller changes that lead to massive improvements over time. And it is of course our objective over time to largely eliminate most of these wasteful accounting processes. But at the earlier stage of lean, change we are content to improve the processes provide learning to the finance people and free up their time for more significant lean changes in the future